warm greetings to my colleagues and a warm welcome to my beloved students. I will first of all take this opportunity. So I think uh, it's easy to come here and I could not miss this opportunity. Thank you so much.
discuss the differences in the uh, anatomy. A good knowledge of anatomy is the fundamental for every surgeon. Recent development of endoscopy in middle ear surgery has permitted an extremely detailed view of the anatomy of the middle ear. Exploration of the hidden recesses. Now this is very important. This is the limiting factor of our microscopic surgery that the hidden areas, the sinus tympani, the anterior epitympanic space, the pro-tympanic space, these are not well visualized with a microscope or a lot of maneuver is required to actually get into these spaces and therefore the high incidence of residual or the cost. So to prevent to have an adequate exposure of the retro-tympanic spaces, we have the role of What are the various structures that are better seen on endoscopy rather than with a microscope? So, talking of the vitro tympanum, here is a beautiful picture of the endoscopic examination of the vitro tympanum where we can see the facial nerve and the facial recess area. If we see this picture and if we have the facial nerve in view, we can clearly remove the disease, remove the cholestatoma with better confidence. We will, if, it, if it is under vision, we will remove the disease to the foot. Then the other area that is important, which is the surgeon's graveyard, if we need disease here, this is the commonest place where residual disease is left behind. So here if we examine or if we see the sinus tympani by an endoscopic view, we are sure we will be able to approach it and remove the sinus under vision. So here the fear of facial nerve going deep to the facial nerve, going medium to the facial nerve, that angulation, that change of the table position, change of the patient position, all can be prevented by using an angle endoscope, going properly to the sinus tympani, visualizing it and removing the cholestatoma in close. Here again in this picture you can see the picture tympani how the pitro tympanum can be divided into superior and inferior pitro tympanum going from oval window to round window clearing this part is much easier we are more confident more sure no residual if we are using an angled endoscope so here may we may be able to do this classification only because of the endoscopes and here if we see in the last picture how the sinus tympani is very deep going posteriorly behind the vertical part of the patient now. So if we have this kind of sinus tympani with a high jugular bulb with receding behind the vertical part, it's not possible to do the clearance without the use of an angled endoscope. So here we can see the difference we have to see the posterior uh, uh, sinus symphony area with an endoscope and here how limited view we are getting with the microscope. So if we have to do dissection of the retro tympanum, we will start identifying the foot plate, the round window, foot plate is located, the round window is located and in between the two sinuses, the sinus tympani and how step by step we shall remove the Another space that is limitedly seen by a microscope is the epitympanic space. So here the tympanic diaphragm or the ventilation of the attic and the middle ear can be well visualized by a endoscope. Again this is not seen so thoroughly, so well by a microscope unless we remove the anterior attic wall. So a lot of bone work is involved if we want to see the anterior epitympana or the ventilation of the various mucus folds, the tensor tympanite tender, the various ligaments of the various the tympus if we have to see the epitympanic spaces. Similarly, if we have to see the probe, 
tympanum, the supratumbral recess, the anterior epitympanum. Unless we remove a good amount of bone from the anterior epitympanum, we may not be able to visualize with a microscope. Here, with an endoscope, we are much comfortable and sure. So, if we see physiologically, here we are using a microscope and to go up to the middle ear, we have a limited view and you have to be 90 degrees right on top of the middle ear to see the structure below. But with an endoscope, we can cross the narrowest part of the canal and a good adequate wide view of the middle ear is achieved. So to focus on the attic, we need to give a post auricular incision and then we can go via the trans canal microscopic approach and approach the attic. So, instrumentation and equipment. Larger the diameter, better the field, better the duration. So, the more the number of the cables or the wires that cross the endoscope, we will get a better irritation, better magnification, but then the size of the canal is a limiting factor. So, people use 4 mm diameter quite comfortably, but 3 mm diameter scopes have also come into use. So, 0 degree endoscope with 3 to 8 mm diameter, 14 to 18 cm in length. Anchored endoscopes for better view of retrotympanic spaces. Now, longer endoscopes are preferred though the organ scopes they come in a small size because the two hands of the surgeons they may not cross each other. The instrument hand and the hand, the non-dominant hand holding the endoscope, they will work separately. There shall be no interference of the two hands. We need a high definition monitor and a camera rather than a single chip camera. Because even a single drop of blood may create that orange hue, that red out and the, the entire field may become easy. Analog cameras are known for radar. The instrumentation is generally the same, same micro instruments are used, but then the endoscope has the uh, ability to cross the shaft and the instruments they usually don't come in the way of the operating surgeon. Otherwise, while you are doing a microscopic surgery, the micro instruments sometimes they obstruct the view of the surgeon. So we are adapted to see the corners and sometimes when we are giving the tympanometal incision there may be a bleeding, we don't have patience, we don't use an epinated soap uh, swab and the canal is narrow, we abandon, approach neura, bleeding area and we quickly shift to the post auricular approach. So there our patients are tested and we should wait and have patience. So, if we have to start with an endoscopic surgery, we should soon choose a simple surgery at first. It should be a simple myricotomy or maybe a wide canal type 1 with panoplasty. It should be a dry ear canal with no cannulations so that there is less of bleeding and an uninfected. Now, as per the difference in investigations, the Routine HRCT with axial, sagittal, coronal sections are good for microscopic settings. But if we want to approach a cholestoma case with an endoscope, we need reconstructed views along the plane of the external auditory meters, which gives better visualization as the surgeon encounters the endoscopic approach. The same view. Now, consent, though the patient will opt for endoscopic by the when we lure him that it will be a scarless, stitchless surgery but still but still we should not forget to take the consent that it may have to be converted into a post auricular approach. And of course the scar, the small scar may be in the region of the tragus for procuring the pelicontrium or the So this we can see how different is the delumination, the magnification of the middle ear when seen through an endoscope and when seen through a 
disadvantages of microscopic impactocasty and narrow operative field, long intraoperative time because of excessive excessive uh, because of the soft tissue dissection, the closure part is reduced, suturing part is decreased. So we have a less intraoperative time for endoscopic scarring and digitalization of the pinna now because of the especially when we have unfit patients of the army, they are very worried about the scar and Amdekna because of the dressing, so many patients come to you and they tell you ki ek kaan bahar ko hai aur ek cheek hai. So this is also the dressing part which leads to lateralization of pinna and post operative pain because of more soft tissue dissection as compared to the endoscopic technique. Advantages of endoscopic impanoplasty is the bird's eye view. So, the wider field, field beyond the surgical hands, no hindrance from the operating instruments, gives the bird's eye view of the surgical field, avoids incision in scar, very little soft tissue handling, so less traumatic, far less healing, preserves the normal anatomy, reduced post operative pain. So better approach to the hidden areas, the sinus tympani, anterior mid tympanum, facial recess, the hypo tympanum. No need to focus the microscope again and again. For an endoscope, you just have to increase the depth to go to a particular area. So there is no need to focus to change the magnification. Less operative time, it is a daycare surgery, avoids next strain of the surgery. So when we enter our middle age, that's an important factor, the sitting, the position of the back on the chair. So in endoscope, right ahead, you have the trolley and less straight to your neck and back. Useful tool in teaching institutes where everything is visible to your students. Disadvantages of endoscopic impanoplasty, challenging single hand test. Loss of depth perception, excessive heat dissipation. So, thermal injury because of the close uh, approximation of the tip of the endoscope to the vital structures. Limited instrumentation, constant cleaning of the tip of an endoscope with an anti fog solution is required. So, to decrease the incidence of thermal injury from the tip, the power light should not be greater than 50%, a safe a safe distance of 5 mm from the inner structure should be maintained. So now I think uh, whenever a new thing comes up, the learning graph is slow, slow in the beginning. It is slow in the beginning, but once we achieve that level, level it will go rapidly upwards. Whereas in a microscope, we get that stagnation. So how? Uh, there are people, we have surgeons, autologic surgeons who are using endoscope as easily as a microscope. So the benefit curve goes high straight up in the once we are, we overcome the initial inertia. So since minimally invasive surgery is becoming a standard practice today, the incorporation of autologic surgeries show promising outcomes. So it is just appropriate to say that endoscope is an adjunct to microscope but never a substitute. Nevertheless, endoscopic ear surgery is truly a game changing development in autology. Thank you.